Hi everybody, today we're going to give you guys a tip on the starting position on the surf and how your hand should position with the non-dominant hand and how to be relaxed in a comfortable fashion before you go up and launch into the surf. I'm going to do an example, be sure that first of all your non-dominant hand will be gripping the ball, however it's on the fingertips. So on the fingertips like so, don't hold the ball in the palm of your hand because that's very difficult to throw the ball up. So in the fingertips and just be really gentle okay. Um, when you serve it's a relaxed action at the beginning and it gets more violent at the top with a little bit more effort although it shouldn't be that much effort you shouldn't be muscling the surf so at the beginning you should be as relaxed as you can so as you walk up to the line okay so you should bounce the ball a couple of times align yourself with the stance whether you are tilted or not or a little bit more open that's up to you and we'll get into that a little bit later however when you guys come up to serve I want to emphasize that your hand should always be the same with the non-dominant hand gripping the ball in the fingertips and then you guys can try to put it in the throat of the racket with the dominant hand relax down like so this way in so this fashion it's always the same and you're always relaxed before you go into your serve some people like to rest the racket on top of the other non-dominant hand and that's fine also I prefer to be on the, the ball to be supported by the throat some people like to serve it here to prepare here and that's fine too but be sure that the non-dominant hand is gripping the ball in the fingertips and the non-dominant hand is touching the racket at the beginning some people they serve like that then you're gonna fluctuate on your serve be sure you're always touching the ball with the racket all the time every serve is the same the rituals and routine are the same every time hands are relaxed shouldn't be up high like this shouldn't be like this that's too stressful for your serve so for my sharing to you guys definitely try to be relaxed before you start your take back check your stance alignment it's always the same whether you're open neutral or closed before you go ahead and do your take back you should have mentally a few moments to rest and think about what type of serve you're going to hit so before you even go down on take back you've already planned what serve you're going to hit how you're going to play the point out and how, what kind of tactics you're going to use for your opponent so the most important part is the non-dominant hand gripping in the fingertips and as before you serve in the ready position as you walk up to the line as you align your stance the hands should be relaxed with the ball and the racket touching whether it is resting on the non-dominant hand racket resting on the non-dominant hand in the throat in the strings it should be touching the, the two objects racket and ball should be touching shouldn't be and shouldn't have space in between so I hope that tip can help you guys and I'm going to demonstrate one for you guys now So as you see, I'm very relaxed before I serve. I think about it. It is here, resting. There's no space between the ball and the racket. Arms are down. I'm really relaxed physically. And then, and then I proceed with my toss and my take back. And that's gonna help you greatly on your serve. Remember the preparation is key to producing a great serve because it helps clear the mind and gets your body in a good position in order to hit that serve. So let's try that out and hope that helps you guys. Hi guys, today we'll give you a tip on putting more spin on your serve. Okay, so from the starting position, you can program your hand or give your hand a little bit of a guide, a reminder, in order to put more spin on the serve. And we're just gonna use a slice serve as the first example then we're going to use the kick serve as a second example but either way 
you're gonna start the same way in this ready position before you do your take back and the reminder is the same so you will see this with all the top servers they will have this and this is a tip that you probably already know but you don't really notice how important it is so from the starting position with the continental grip with the ready position you're going to have the grip slightly tilted but with a continental grip tilted so that the racket face faces up okay why you want to do that is because the starting position you're going to have the racket face open like so before you go ahead and serve the ball before you go ahead for the take back now why you want to do this is because as you go and proceed with your take back as you go into the trophy position this hand is in that position and it helps because it's not like this this will not help a spin serve whether you slice it or kick it so just a reminder here with the racket face open with the slight tilt of your grip continental grip racket face is open then you proceed with your take back in your own style into the trophy position the hand will be like this after the trophy position then as you rotate the pan will automatically be on its edge then you come up and contact the ball then the hand will go ahead be in a really nice position for the spin serve whether you flexion or pronate this is a great reminder before you go in to your serve for more spin okay and whether you do a kick serve or a slice serve it all looks the same at the beginning because it's all the different other variation in the toss only and the pronation only so at the beginning you start like this and as you go up to the trophy position you can do a check this is the same position as you go and hit this is a great position for producing spin so we're going to do an example for you guys now. Okay. This is the kick. And as you can see, both starting positions are the same in terms of the wrist position with the continental grip at the beginning. And as I take back, this wrist position is the same. It's only the variation in the toss and whether I flexion or pronation this position at the beginning the preparation before the serve will help give me more spin in generating that spin serve so be sure to give yourself that reminder before you go for your serve and look forward to producing more spin on your serve hi guys today we're going to give you guys some tips on the different types of stances on the serve so the different stances will affect how you go and hit your serve and also affect what you do after the serve okay so that's very important as well before you go ahead and pick your stance for your serve or choose your stance for the serve so the different stances are number one platform stance number two pinpoint stance and the third one being the back leg moving up and there's two types to that one and then the last one being the scissors kick one the platform stance is where the feet are position the shoulder width apart and there is no movement in the legs especially the back leg okay and when you go up to serve it's just a reach up and going upwards into your serve without any movement of the legs for example that was a platform stance serve the pinpoint stance is where the legs are together also there is no movement of the legs forward front foot or backward and we go ahead and go upwards into the serve okay now the third one is where the back foot will move up okay there is two types of the one where the back foot moves up is some people like to slide the foot together some people like to place it by the side of the other leg now usually the one where they place it on the other side next to the non-dominant side leg there will be a rotation of the upper body 
there will be more rotation there is more twist because the hips are facing this way or the upper body is facing the other way and as you coil back then you'll generate more torque on that one on the last one is a scissors jump it's where as you go ahead and serve the back leg will jump and overlap over like so and that is used more traditionally for players that like to go and serve volley so for example they would go and cross it over and then start running forward and that is not used so much now nowadays as more players are using this type of non-dominant foot landing and then split step so that is more common nowadays and that is that happens after the different stances that you have on the serve except the last one so it happens on the platform stance pinpoint stance and the leg moving up it's very important to know what you're going to do after your serve for example for serve volleyers they want to want to move forward to the net as quick as they can so they're going to be sure that they're moving forward and up as they hit the serve whereas if you're going to serve and then stay back you don't need to move forward so you're probably going to go up more upwards more on the serve and then stay stationary and then ready for your split step for the reply so on the platform stance it's good to go more upwards whereas the pinpoint stance you can go a little bit more forward and whereas the back leg moving up helps you guys going more forward on a small serve volley approach we would suggest everybody to go upwards on the serve more definitely and especially if you're going to stay on the baseline after your serve there's no need to be moving so much into the court as you serve if you're not going to serve volley okay now so we're going to demonstrate a few serves for you guys first one being platform stance second one being pinpoint stance third one being a move back foot moving up fourth one being a scissors kick on the serve this one is the platform stance this serve is the pinpoint stance See, I'm moving more forward. The second one is where the back foot moves up, but it moves to the side of the non dominant foot, and I will get more rotation as I go hit the serve. And you'll see that I'm shifting forward because my back. My back foot is moving forward, my weight is a little bit more forward and I want to lean in. The last serve is being a scissors kick serve where the back leg will cross over as I hit the ball. Okay, so those are four different types of stances that happens on the serve being platform stance, pinpoint stance, the back foot moving up in two styles, and then the scissors kick over as you serve. The most popular one, and the one that I suggest through my experience, is the platform stance. And definitely be more moving upwards as you serve. Because as you go moving upwards as you serve, you will get more height over the net, and more energy is going up and out into the ball. However, you can adjust that slightly as you go ahead and serve volley because you want to go ahead and get closer to the service line. But definitely use a platform stance because there is one less variable to deal with in terms of balance and coordination. 
you'll find more success with the platform stance. However, the other stances work too, it just requires more practice. And definitely consider what happens during pressure and game situations. So be sure to practice all the serves anyway. And I would suggest the platform stance and practice it and let us know how you feel. And be sure to share any comments with us. And we're looking forward to hearing from you. Hi everybody, today we're gonna to give you guys a tip on the serve for people who have a tight arm, yeah? When you have a tight arm, you can't really serve, okay? That's as simple as that. Because when you serve, and you want to serve a fast serve, you want to serve a relaxed serve, and especially during pressure, your arm needs to be really relaxed. So I want to give you guys a tip on how to make your arm more relaxed, okay? So um, as you go and serve, okay, don't go ahead and serve first. Be sure you grip the racket really lightly, it's almost about to come out of your hand and just swing like this first okay if you swing like this and there's a little whoosh sound then your arm is really relaxed and you can see i'm almost about to let go of the racket you know so before you serve just do a couple of these first and then go ahead and then serve and you'll realize that after you're doing a couple of practice swings shadow tennis relax hand then you'll serve with more, more um, velocity as your more, uh, arm is more relaxed. Second tip I have for you is don't touch the racket yet. Okay? Lift the elbow up, let your arm do this first. This has worked a lot with my students where they're just going to flex this. Don't, of course they're relaxed, they're not you know, muscling your arm because that's not good for your shoulder joint and your rotator. So if you just do a little bit of this, okay? I know it's really silly motion but it really helps. Now go ahead and have an abbreviated swing, immediately go ahead and okay, and serve. So that's another way to loosen up your arm before you go ahead and serve. Now, one more is the famous one where, I don't know if it's famous for you guys, but it's famous for what I've heard from all my mentors is the three finger one, okay? Grip it with three fingers with the last two fingers off and just go ahead and, just go ahead and loop it. Okay, you cannot be tight as you do this one because the racket will, will, will hit you, okay? You're gonna relax and let this flow and also you'll realize that the weight, you'll feel the racket head wanting to come out and flop out and that's perfect because once you get used to this, okay, and then you go ahead and grip it back, do a couple more, have the same feeling, okay, have the same feeling, don't grip it very tight, and now go ahead and serve with the same motion. And you realize you'll have that pop because the racket head is coming out. Only provided that you keep the same relax and same motion, same grip tightness, not tight but soft grip pressure on the serve. So those three tips will definitely help you on relaxing your arm before you serve. And try it and let us know how you feel. Hi everybody, today we're going to give you guys some tips on how to adjust the serve in terms of when you make a mistake, what happens when you hit a mistake out, what happens when you make a mistake in the net, what happens when you make a mistake too far to right or to left, or maybe it's not even a mistake, maybe you just want to adjust your serve in order to be higher, lower, left and right, more short and deep. So here's my sharing on a simple way. It has to be simple because simple will help you guys execute it during pressure okay? and also how you can control the ball a little bit better. However, you need this one first. Um, you see on the previous tips, there is a tip on the spin. Okay, I teach all my students to spin first. Okay, And spin is very easy. Have your continental grip, racket and ball from high to low. Let's just keep it simple. Let's not talk about the pronation, flexion, whatever. Just keep it simple and just go high to low first, okay? Because this is the key thing you must have before you progress further. We don't want anybody to hit serves like a pushy serve. That's not good for your serve development. And we want you to be able to practice this and a few months down the line, have a great serve. At least you can understand it easier and control it better. And that means it's a good serve. You might not be able to do it yet, to a high level but at least you understand it and you're progressing in the right direction so be sure to produce this be able to produce this spin first and I'm gonna do an example for you now first of all you need to have a good cutting action on the serve now 
once you have a relaxed arm and you can cut the ball most of the time, what happens if you hit the ball in the net? Okay. Do you need to really change something technically? Not really yet. Okay. Maybe there is something technical, but don't go changing that yet. Just try to simply aim the serve higher. Okay. So for example, I'm going to imagine that there is a high net over. It's twice the size of this net. So I'm going to go and try that now. aiming high so the aim is higher and therefore it would clear the net easier that is if you want to go higher or if you make mistakes or keep making mistakes in the net be sure to just aim it higher and your body will take care of itself or you can simply hit the bottom of the ball cut the bottom of the ball and the ball will go higher okay second one what happens when you hit it out now if you hit it out what do you do you hit it softer Okay, don't start pushing the ball because that's the worst thing you can do. What you can do is put more spin on the ball. Okay? You can maybe slow a little bit down, but don't decrease the racket head speed because too much that's not very good for your future development. We want you to keep increasing that racket head speed. Instead, put more spin on the serve. So So as you can see on those two serves, my spin is a lot on that serve. I put a lot of spin and with the net clearance, it's going to pull the ball down with the gravity. So that's a good tip for you guys if you want to bring that ball shorter, maybe on a shorter wide serve. Wide serve, you can't hit it deep. You got to have it short and wide. Or maybe it's just your serves are consistently hitting long. Be sure not to push it softly because that does nothing to the ball and it gives your opponent an easy shot to attack. Be sure you maintain your racket head speed or even more, put more spin on the ball and the ball will come down more consistently for you. Now what happens if you want to adjust your serve left and right? That's a simple one. You still maintain the cut on the ball. It's just that you contact on a different location on the ball in terms of left and right. So if I cut the ball, maintaining the same cut, I hit the ball, contact the ball here on the right side, it's gonna to go to the left. Now if I contact the same, don't change the contact. You mean the same contact and contact the ball a little bit more in the middle, that's gonna make it go straight. If I spin it the same and I contact it to the left side, it's gonna make that ball go towards the left. And we're going to give you guys an example now. The first one being spinning, contact, spinning it on the right side, second one being in the middle, the third one being on the left. And you'll see the three direction changes to the ball with the same cutting action. So do you see that the three serves I'm contacting on a different location on the ball in terms of left and right, and I will change the location of the ball according to how I want it. Of course, definitely that example was out, but I wanted to show you guys the difference in the location of where I touch the ball, the contact point on the ball, in order to achieve the direction that I wanted. Okay, to recap, if you hit the ball too low, be sure to aim it higher. Imagine there's a higher net, and with more net clearance, the ball will clear the net more and will have more success over the net. Number two, the ball is consistently out or too long, too deep for your liking. Be sure to put more spin on the ball. Don't push it, accelerate and put more spin on the ball so that the spin and gravity will pull that ball down. Number three is if your ball is left and right, too far to the right and left, and you want to adjust it to the direction, left and right, according to your needs, then all you simply need to do is maintain the cutting action and touch the ball on the right side, middle or the left. So if you hit it to the right more, it'll go to the left. If you hit it to the left more, it'll go to the right. But the most important thing is maintain the cutting action on the ball. The arm and the racket swing is still the same. You don't want to go ahead and change the path of your swing just because you want to hit a different location or a different height on the ball. So hope that sharing helps you guys change the placement of your serve in regards to high, low, left, right, short and deep. 
and also to help you guys correct your errors in terms of internet and out or left and right wide. So be sure to practice that a lot because that takes a lot of practice to have good control and share with us your comments and the difficulties that you might have. And we welcome all comments and look forward to hearing from you soon. Hi guys, today we're going to share with you guys the tip on flexion versus pronation on the serve. So what is flexion? When you guys go ahead and serve, upon contact, the wrist will go like this, the flexion. Okay? So the thumb will be facing you as you go ahead and make contact on the serve. Okay? As you follow through. Now, on pronation, however, when you make contact with the serve, okay, when you make contact with the serve, the thumb will be outward, okay, and your racket face, different part of the racket face will be facing you. So, what is the good and bad with the two? Actually, with all the pros, they go ahead and pronate because this is one of the reasons why pronation is the choice. So as you go ahead and do your serve, if you do it at high speed, this pronation has a longer chance of staying up. If you go ahead and do flexion, then your arm is more easily pulled down. So in terms of serving, it's always good to have more reach on the serve. So pronation would delay that arm slightly before it comes down. Now, especially when you do your pronation and then your folding of your elbow joint and then resulting in a high elbow, that also helps with delaying the arm coming down. So um, as you pronate this technique, you can get more torque on the ball as well, more racket head speed, and you can go more upwards and out on the serve. You can still do it with flexion, it's just that the spin and the impact on the ball is not as severe. And also you're using more of a throwing action forward when you do flexion, whereas you go pronation, you're going more upwards. So from my experience in sharing, so we all pronate on the serve, not only because we want more racket head speed and everything, it's just because it's more flowing, it's more efficient and less stressful on the arm. Although you do need to strengthen your arm and your body, shoulder joint, elbows, rotator, in order to produce a good quality pronation for over long periods of time. So flexion is where when you hit the ball, your wrist will flex and the thumb is facing you. If you pronate, the arm will turn, the forearm will turn out and the thumb will be facing outside. So we're going to do an example for you guys now. This is flexion. This is pronation. Now we're going to demonstrate it in a more faster serving action. The first one is flexion. The second one is pronation. So as you can see, with the flexion, it's still a great serve, it's still a good serve, powerful serve, but to get more oomph behind the ball, get more spin and heaviness into the ball, you might choose to practice the pronation technique where it's more of a twisting action, okay? And there'll be more racket head speed and more height on the contact as you stay up longer on the ball and you go up and out more and gives, more, gives a more higher quality ball to your serve. So be sure to practice that a lot because that's a high advanced skill you must have in order to produce a higher quality serve. Hi guys, today we want to share with you guys a tip on the serve regarding the shoulders and how the shoulders would act like a cartwheel, okay, as you would, before impact and to impact. So me being right-handed, Right side is my dominant side, left side being my non-dominant side. As I do my trophy position, 
my right shoulder being my dominant shoulder will be down my left shoulder being my non-dominant shoulder will be up with my tossing hand extended straight definitely as I go and make contact I rotate upwards as I make contact this dominant shoulder will come up over the non-dominant shoulder so this as I do this I'm rotating towards the net and going up and out towards the ball so this is one of the key things that you must have in order to have a powerful serve so let me just show you a shallow swing for example did you see that the dominant shoulder was down and then it came up as I rotate up and out towards contact so we're going to demonstrate a couple for you guys now It's very important to use your body efficiently on the serve and it's very important that the power comes from the center and the large muscles after you get into the trophy position you push the legs into the ground and the body will go upwards and then the shoulders will rotate not only they rotate but they act like a cartwheel where the not where the dominant shoulder will come up and as the body rotates towards the net, as you hit up and out towards the ball. This is very high skilled movement. Make sure to practice without the ball first and then implement it with the toss. It's gonna to take some getting used to, but I guarantee you a faster, a stronger serve. And it's not just about using the arm. It's about using the body from the center, from the core more efficiently to give you guys a relaxed motion as well hi guys today we're going to give you guys a tip on the timing of the knee bend on your serve whether whatever stance you use platform stance pinpoint stance leg moving up back leg moving up or not there's always going to be a slight knee bend on your serve you don't need to go for a full squat because that's a little bit too much the knee bend is responsible for transferring the momentum from the ground to the hips and then to the shoulders to the arms racket head and into the wall the knee bend needs to be timed really well as in a rhythmic motion in order to your motion to be effortless serve for this tennis serve you don't need to be really muscular yeah you just need to be able to have the flow and have the timing and for it to be a rhythmic motion in your ready position shift the way back now as you're going to take the take back into the trophy position we're going to do this one time weight this back two times weight this back three times then you do a slight lead in one two and three okay so as you do your take back into your trophy position that's when you do your slight knee bend another way of saying it is that when the ball leaves your tossing arm on the take back is when you do your slight knee bend you got to time it okay you got to time it so that you can have the flow so that you can go into the ball up and into the ball if you do it too late or too early, it's still probably possible, but it's not a world time rhythmic effortless motion. So another reminder is do one without the knee bend first. Do your take back into your trophy position, upper body first, tossing arm and racket arm together. Then together with the knee bend, then you go. First time, no jump, okay? No leaving the ground. Then, leave the ground as if you're gonna do your service motion. Okay. Do a couple of shadow swings with the timing. And then 
now you can go ahead and do it with the bowl. And then you'll realize that if you time this well, then all the power that's transferred from the ground to the through the legs, through the torso, upper body, shoulders, arm, forearm, wrists, into the racket head, then your serve will be a much more powerful serve with less effort. It's more of a body serve and you enjoy a much more relaxed, reliable, consistent serve, easy power, not muscle power. So be sure to practice that and let us know how you feel. Hey guys, today we're going to give you guys a tip on the roll of the non-dominant arm, which is the tossing arm on your serve, okay, as you go into the contact from the trophy position. So this is a situation we're talking about. From the trophy position, your left arm should be well extended, okay, and it shouldn't always be bent. It should be well extended and held there until the last second and then you pull the non-dominant hand in as you go rotate up towards the ball do not pull the hand in until the very last second why because if you do it too early then there's nothing to help the right hand or the non-dominant arm to go into the ball therefore you will lose power it's very important that you have the components but also the timing of the components on the serve. So for example, I'm going to do one which is incorrect where my left hand or non-dominant hand releases too early or pulls in too early. Okay, do you see that I'm trying to force that hitting arm into the wall? The second one is I'm going to hold this as long as I can during the trophy position until the last moment then I pull in and rotate up and out towards the ball. As you can see that that last motion that I did was more violent is because I left it through the, to the last second before I pulled the non-dominant hand in and I pull the non-dominant hand in and the hitting arm just fly. It's because I saved all the energy that I gathered for the last second where I snap the racket head into the ball. So be sure to try that. At the beginning, do it slow, but you'll gradually, gradually increase the speed as you get better at it. It is important to start off slow and as you get used to it, you will get used to timing the ball to the very very last second before you pull the non-dominant hand in and then the racket hand will go up towards the ball transferring all the power that you accumulated into the racket head and eventually into the ball for a more powerful but efficient relaxed motion hi guys how are you all doing want to share with you guys a tip for everybody who has a pushy serve that you're scared to accelerate or maybe because you're nervous maybe your arm is too tight you want to find a way to relax that arm and you want to just let go okay i've got a tip for you guys and it's worked great for me in the past because when i was really young i always tried to push this serve in and and my dad gave me a great tip for me to be able to let go for a little while before you can increase that eventually transform that into racket head speed that gets that ball in okay Remember, pushy serve will not get you very far, okay? So, first thing I want you guys to do is understand the spin motion first, okay? This is the motion that you're gonna hit the ball with, and you're not gonna pow, you're gonna just cut the ball, okay? Cool? That's number one first. Now, number two is, I want you guys to be able to make a swish sound. Do you hear that swish sound? Okay, not even talking about technique, okay? Let's not get specific on the technique, because that's gonna get you more get you more tied up here. So we're gonna relax the mind. We're gonna swish sound with a relaxed motion, okay? To get that racket head speed going, okay? So, the third one is, I want you guys to hit that ball into the opposed thing fence. Yes, not in the court. Just go ahead and smash the ball over the, to the other side of the fence. So, like this. Okay? So, if you do this, for a few times, you're not going to do this forever because then um, your opponent is not going to be very happy with you. Be sure to practice this on your own with a bucket of balls, loosen up your arm, 
don't muscle it because if you muscle it, it's worse. Go ahead and do a relaxed motion, send the ball far, and then now let's do it again with the cutting motion. Same motion, same relax, same free and swing out attitude, but with the spin. So let's see how it works. Okay, so on those two last serves, I'm still accelerating, but I'm accelerating with a spin. So in order for you to be able to do that, for those people who like to push the serve or just feel that there's so much pressure and you don't want to let go, practice that. Practice those tips I gave you at the beginning first. We just go and swing, have a go, yeah? Clear the mind first, enjoy, enjoy the ball going far, and then put the spin back in, and then you'll eventually get that ball back in with good racket head speed velocity, and then your opponents will not take advantage of your serve anymore, and then you'll have more confidence to keep going with accelerating the racket head speed, eventually going resulting in a great serve. Let's give that a try.